Guys, the English ban list is finally out. This is effective from April 1st, so it will be applying to our Spring Fests very, very soon. And I think I, I, I think I like these, right? I like this. It kind of shows that Bushi Global English side cares for us because they see that the ban list for Japan was definitely not sufficient for our metagame. And we have the data to prove it, so they gave us another one, right? Another one. So if we look here... All right, standard and premium, no updates, right? I did want some hits in premium, but that would have been the icing of the cake. There is definitely, like, some one deck that is probably very, very strong in premium. Um, but, you know, with Spring Fest coming up, sure, right? The, the, there's still a lot of more cards coming out. Um, the meta can change because it's premium. Uh, so it would have been it would have been nice, but it wasn't, like, just the, the thing that would have broken the whole thing. The, the problem right now is V-Prem. And this is basically all the updates from the Japan one. Uh, they just translated in English, right? So, you know, Hamil, gone, right? Gone. Miep, restricted to the one. Uh, Percival, restricted to the one as well. And Gurgit is unrestricted. So these are exactly the same as the Japanese list. Um, but you can see there's a page two. You can see this arrow, right? There's a page two. Bam. Boys. Choice restriction for Bermuda Triangle and Shadow Paladin. This is actually huge, right? So for Bermuda Triangle, Kutia, Rosa, and Ellie are restricted in V-Prem. You have to choose one, right? And this choice is actually quite smart, right? You have to, if you're playing Prism, you can't throw in the Highlander engine anymore. We saw last, uh, last BS, uh, BRO, people were trying out Kutia in a more Highlander build of Prism and making that work, right? So. They hit the Kutia and Rosa. You can't play them all. If you're playing Prism, you have to play Rosa. And if you're playing Highlander, you never ran Rosa anyway. Now, one of the things that is very, very annoying, though, with Kutia is that it usually searches out Ellie, right? And every turn, you keep on getting those uh, extra defenses. So now you've totally nerfed the defensive power of, um, of Bermuda Triangle. Right, so if you're playing Prism, you don't have the Ellie's to fall back on for that defensive power. If you're playing Highlander, you also don't have the easy Ellie's to kind of just fall back on as well. So if you're playing Ellie, you have to play something that is not Prism, and you have to play something that can't really exactly search it out as easy as Kotia can, right? So I think this is a pretty good hit. I think that's an okay hit. Um, and I, I, I'd be interesting to see what happens now with Bermuda Triangle. There's a lot of Bermuda Triangle that you can try out. Um, that is still quite good, and this actually, you know, lets things like Referade kind of see some light, right? Some light, so I'm quite, I quite like that. The second one is Shadow Paladin. This also did not get hit in Japan, but it's definitely a great deck. It's still a great deck, right? Um, if you look at the conversion rating for both of these, these were absolutely huge. Uh, so, but, you know, Prism being the big one, but, you know, Shadow Paladin, of course, right? That this would also have risen up in, into, like, actual powerful deck. Uh, they hit Charon. They, they added the choice restrict. Uh, so you can you have to pick between the main, Charon, and Dragheart Luad. You are definitely playing Luad if you're playing a Luad deck. So you don't get to use Charon. And that is really, really big. Because you don't get the counter charge anymore. From, the, the easy counter charge. Charon. Charon actually solves two problems. It is the early game where you can Leah Fallon to Charon and get basically like fr free stuff, right? Uh, the second thing is later on you can Soul Blast stuff out very easily with Charon. Um, of course, you still have Owls to do that too. Uh, but, you know, you can, with the Charon, it's easy, it also counter charges, so you you have much more free time with your counter blast, and usually you're using, like, two counter blasts a turn with the Morphessa later on, you don't have that much flexibility anymore, you could, yeah, I'd have to really, really be careful with your counter blast, or you just get three huge attacks later on, and that's that, that's really that, it actually nerfs the long game for Luad quite a lot too, um, which was one of its great strengths. It could literally just sit there for a very, very long time, damage deny forever, and then, you know, finally kill you off when the deck is super compressed, or it could have played a really, really aggressive game too. So now it doesn't really get that super long game anymore, especially if Charon, they have to find different ways to fill in the grade one slot that can replace Charon, and that's not easy. That is not, not easy as well. So this, hitting these two decks definitely um, does bring like a lot of other decks up into play. Something like Grand Blue definitely will we'll definitely see more play now. People are like, okay, yeah, it was really, really good before. Now it's still very, very good. But at least we're not seeing this meta where it's going to be like uh, Top Cut is going to be just infinite prisms, right? X2 is just going to be infinite prisms. And then Luad would have just naturally rose up. And they had to keep the Japanese restriction as well. Because if we didn't, if we didn't, if Miep didn't get hit, guess what the next deck is going to be? It's just going to be straight there. Gold Paladin as well, you know. The, you would have migrated to a lot of these decks that came out, guess what, you know, Divine Lightning Radiance plus. Speaking of Divine Lightning Radiance, 
Now, finally, Vanquisher gets to rise up again, right? Gets to rise up and have some fun. So, I think V is in a way better spot. We are in a way better spot compared to Japan, where Japan is. Um, and going to Springfest, where it's going to be really, really fun meeting people again in real life. Um, this is like the extra plus. You know, this is the extra plus where we're going, going in and going, we're not going to have to face a Prism meta again or a Luad meta, right? We're going to be facing um, hopefully other stuff. Maybe a Grand Blue meta. I'm sure Grand Blue will be quite happy with that. Or maybe Kyger will, will come out. Mangusha, yeah. I like it. I like it. So good job. I, I say good job. Um, global team. Uh, you guys did a good job. And um, it, although our, our metas are now very different from Japan, um, at least we get the good one. I think. At least we get the good one. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, it, it just shows that they, they actually they, they do care about us, guys. I know a lot of people like to say, ah, Gushi Global doesn't care. No, dude. They clearly do. They clearly do. They work behind the scenes to get this done. And I can I can guarantee you, right, this probably wasn't that easy compared to what a... It probably wasn't that easy. They probably had to jump through some hoops. Um, so, yeah, letting them letting us have, like, a good list like this, or a better list at least, um, yeah, that's great. That's great. So I hope... I want to see what everyone else thinks. I think it's, it's definitely a step in the correct direction. Um... I mean, I, I might have changed something different, but you know, we're, we're getting we're getting this second page, guys. We're getting this second page, um, and yeah, it's it's definitely looking better than what we than what it was on Tuesday. Okay, so let me let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.